Are you enjoying the evolution of your desire? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Unfulfilled desires, a blessing, yes? No sarcasm meant there. It is so lovely when you get it that the new desire that has freshly been hatched, even though it has not manifested, in its summoning power, it is life-giving. And the key to a joyous life is to feel no discomfort in the constant unfolding. Joyous in my now, eager for more, not discouraged because something that I believe I want has not yet shaped up or formed up or shown up, but eager in understanding that it is all coming and that the perspective that I, meaning you, standing in your physical bodies now hold is a precious, glorious perspective. Now, where the physical me, meaning you, meets the non-physical you, meaning us, standing here in this powerful now. All of your power is now because your ability to focus is now. And you can tell how well you are focused, meaning how much of the source that is really you, you are allowing to focus through the lens that is the human you. You can tell how you're doing by how you feel. Your emotions are literally the focusing mechanism. We have some new terminology that we're offering, and we call it when you're beating the drum of something. When you're beating the drum of not enough money, even though you really would like more money, more money cannot be experienced by you, not right now, not while the beating of the drum of not enough money is the dominant vibration you've got going. You can know that you're feeling negative emotion, but you may not know exactly why. And while it is always very bright and clever of us, or anyone, to say, just don't think that thought and you'll feel better, when you've been beating the drum of something and you have it pretty well activated within you, it's not the easiest thing, just change the subject altogether. To stop thinking the thoughts that you've been thinking for a while. That's what beliefs are. They're just thoughts that you've been thinking. You've been beating the drum of the thought so that it comes forth to you more easily. For example, it's easy in your environment to hold the thought that in my longer on this planet years, my physical experience will be diminished. It's easy for you to beat that drum because there have been so many who have wanted you to see your life that way. They have projected it to you in a rather clear view and you've accepted it and talked about it and tried to insure against it. You've worried about it. You've beat the drum of it enough, in fact, that you attract to you quite a bit of evidence that that's the way that it is. There's no reason to look out into the world to see things you don't want. And just because somebody else has created them, and so they are somebody's reality, that you make them your reality. You are the creator of reality. And so, do you get how this is following around? I am the creator of my reality. So I'll look out into the world at realities I don't want to create that are only realities because somebody else beat the drum of them and because they are reality, now I'll beat the drum of them and make them my reality. And we say, that's dumb. Why do that? Why not look out into the database of creation and selectively sift the realities that you want to replicate and beat those drums? Your answer is, we do it because it's reality. We do it because somebody else did it. If we were standing in your physical shoes, we would not let the reality of something be our basis for attention. We would let the feeling, vibration of it be our basis. So we would start saying to anyone who was interested in knowing what we were about, if it feels good, I give it my full attention. If it doesn't, I don't look at it at all. And you know what they'll say to you? You should face reality. 
and then say to them, I do, I do it all the time. I've just become a more selective sifter of the reality that I face. Because I've begun to discover that whatever reality I'm facing, whatever reality I'm talking about, thinking about, remembering, regurgitating, whatever reality I'm making statistics of, whatever reality I'm holding for very long in my vibration becomes my own reality. And I have become particular about the realities that I replicate in my experience because I've discovered I can create reality. I can create reality. I can create reality and I can choose the reality that I'm creating. Ooh, we love saying that to you. You are creators, and you can create anything that you want, but there's a better way of saying it. You can and will create anything that you are giving your attention to. So you are born with this magnificent barometer, this guidance system, this emotional center that lets you know how you're doing right now. And right now is all that matters because right now is the drum you're beating. Right now is the vibration that you're emanating. Right now is setting up your now and future experiences. And so it doesn't matter what you have created before. It doesn't matter what you have thought about before. It doesn't matter where you've been before. All that matters right now is your relationship between what you now want in your wisdom with all of this experience that you've gathered and what you are thinking about in relationship to it. If you want more money now, you must stop beating the drum of absence of money. you got to stop talking about there not being enough. You've got to stop beating the drum of not enough. And you say, well, how can I not notice? And we say, oh, of course you're going to notice. Just don't make a federal case out of it. Just don't focus upon it incessantly. Stop talking about it. Stop using your not enough money as the basis of explaining to people who you are. So many who want more money walk down the street and everyone they meet, they say, I don't have enough money. They'll look in a shop window and they'll complain that it costs too much. Or they will see someone who is spending money freely and they will criticize them as if there is something wrong. You've got to stop feeling bad about money if you want more money to come. Is there anyone here who would like an improved physical condition? Then you've got to stop focusing upon the physical condition that is bothering you. You've got to stop saying, I don't feel good. You've got to stop beating the drum of what you do not want. And now we're going to free you from all of that by explaining to you why you beat the drum of what you do not want. It's very simple. You know from the very core of your being that you're supposed to feel good. And when you don't feel good, you know something is really, really wrong. And then you set out to explain why you don't feel good. Because you know not feeling good, not feeling happy about money, not feeling good about your body, not feeling good about your relationship, not feeling good about your job, not feeling good about your work environment. You know that it is wrong. You know that you're supposed to feel good. And when you don't, you feel like you need to explain to someone why it is. So you keep explaining that if it were not for this, that you would feel better. Not realizing that if it were not for talking about if it were not for this, It would not be a vibrational player in your experience. Now, even though we know, and even though you know that we know, that talking about what is often doesn't serve you, especially if when you talk about what is, it doesn't feel good. We all know that you can't all of a sudden stop the patterns that you've developed. And we want to say to you, that's okay too. In other words, we see so often Something isn't going the way you want it to go. And that makes you feel bad. And then you feel bad about feeling bad. And then you feel really bad about having felt so bad about feeling bad. (laughs) And then you really feel bad about having felt bad. Because you know you're supposed to feel good. And then you talk to your friends about how bad you feel about not feeling better. Make a new decision today that you're going to make the best of wherever you are. And... Pat yourself on the back and say to yourself that the best that you can make of it is good enough and nobody else knows. What we mean by that is sometimes when you're in the depth of despair about something, anger is a relief. But somebody who has not been in the depths of despair and who is rarely angry, 
you know, one of those bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, annoying people <laughs> who sees you in your anger may very well say to you, your anger is misplaced, you should get over it. At which point, you'd like to punch their lights out. Because they don't know. No one can know that the anger that you're feeling right now was a big improvement over the despair that you were feeling before you chose the anger. Nobody knows that the anger that you're feeling, and maybe even displaying, is an improvement in your vibrational stance. That in order to stop beating the drum of despair, you chose the drum of anger, and it was a better drum. Now, we're not encouraging you to stay stuck in anger. We're encouraging you to take the bridge from depression that anger gives you, but then keep saying the same thing, I'm going to still keep trying to find a better feeling. I'm going to still try to make the best of this. What we are wanting you to begin saying is, nobody else gets to decide whether my anger is misplaced or not. And if I choose anger over grief, I'm going to start patting myself on the back that I've made a bridge toward joy. And just because somebody catches me in the middle of my bridge, that would be like traveling from... San Diego to Phoenix and beating up on yourself because you're in Yuma and saying to yourself I'm supposed to be in Phoenix why am I in Yuma and some wise person might say to you because Yuma's on the way <laughs> about halfway between San Diego and Phoenix it's, it's on the way and even though you know what your destination is you don't beat up on yourself because you're not there right now you have come forth into a creative environment at a time when the energy is moving faster than we've ever seen it any time, any place, anywhere. You are a creative genius. You said, I want to be part of this fast-moving energy. I adore an environment where there is so much variety to choose from. And I will pay attention, you said, to the way I feel. And I will mold the energy. I will mold my thoughts. I will pick and choose by trial and error. I will feel my way into alignment with who I am. And after I am aligned, I will flow that energy toward what I choose. And Source will assist me in all ways. There is so much resource assisting you. You are very much not alone. You are the focal point of the energy that creates worlds. And all that energy and all that source adores you and will give you evidence in every moment of every day if you will allow it to help you to know the perfection that we know you are. Jerry and Esther have recently been working on taking the Sarah book and Jerry read it into a recorder many times. And then they edit it into the CDs and cassettes that they are making available to you. And someone had written them a letter, knowing how much Esther likes the alignment of numbers. She sees it as evidence of her well-being. When she looks at the odometer and sees 11111, she loves that she has been inspired to look just at that moment. So they are listening to the recording driving down the freeway. And Sarah has just awakened in the story. And she has looked at her digital clock, which reads 111. She doesn't know why she's awake, but she enjoys the coincidence of seeing 111, and she goes back to sleep. And in a few more moments, she wakes up and sees 222 on the clock. And then she goes back to sleep and wakes up again and sees 333 on the clock. Now this gets her attention. And as Jerry and Esther are listening to the recording, first time they are hearing it as they are driving the monster bus, they are at mile marker 333. And Esther says, I adore how the universe is able to orchestrate these things to make the timing of our life so apparent to us. But there is an even stranger coincidence, as if there could be such a thing as a coincidence. So a woman wrote to them, I think it is lovely, she said, that the Sarah book ended on page 222. And Esther said to Jerry, I was not aware of that, were you? <laughs>